Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Rousey here for Foundation, Foundation Expo 88 YouTube. Um, and again, with Leo Hilshire. And before we started, we were just talking about a couple of uh, humorous antidotes in relation to Expo. Um, and in this particular uh, YouTube, I did particularly want to talk about um, the period of time where the numbers going through the Expo sort of sent a uh, uh, a thrill of joy through Celio's heart because Leo uh, was on the board of Expo uh, and so while he did retire on the day or the day before on the day of Expo uh, which is one of the funny stories that we'll be uh, alluding to in fact why don't we talk about that story now so now tell us the, the story about uh, the Queen and, oh. and how she uh, uh, took your news that you were retiring from her good employee well uh as you know, the Queensland uh, Expo building was, was one of the best on the, on the site. And after the, in the evening of the uh, opening ceremony, she and her, uh, her party visited the Expo ex 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 Exhibition Hall. And they painted on the floor a track of white, two white lines as a snake through the, through the theatre, through, through, through the Exhibition Hall. Yeah. So she could see a lot of people. We, everybody come up to the white line, and and at that time the uh, the new premier was uh, Michael Hearn, mm -hmm. and as they come up towards us, uh, Michael Hearn had the Queen on his arm or close by. Uh, Bill Gunn had the Duke, and the various a couple of ministers had the various uh, uh, princes on their arm. When he gets to me, he introduced me and he said, "Ma'am, this is Sir Leo Hilcher, the Under Treasurer for Queensland." And, and Leo is retiring today. And she made all sorts of lovely noises about happy retirement and healthy retirement. And, and uh, as, you, as you do, if you don't really mean what you're saying, and then moved on. And then she came back, uh, walked one, one step back and she looked at me and she said, why would you be retiring? And I said, well, now, if she asked me the question, I can reply. I'm not going to raise the issue, but she's asked me the question. The protocol says I can reply. So I said, well, ma'am, I've worked for you for 46 years. I'm going to retire now and join the private sector and make some money. And she laughed and laughed and laughed. I think it was the first few words she'd heard since she'd hit the Australian soil, which were already prescribed that she, was, that she hear and speak. Mm. And it, was she away, did, it was away from the script. And she did actually have an incredibly busy time when she hit, because of part of the project, uh, I took my children out to Longreach and went to the Hall of Fame. And of course, there's the plaque there, and she opened that the day before. And it was, so it was amazing, you know, one day doing a major ceremony opening the Hall of Fame that was a very substantial uh, investment by Australians in the, the heritage of Australia. and then. She's straight down doing expo the next day, and it would have been very tiring for her. And that, on that, I'm just add a little bit there. <clears throat> we went out to welcome her to Longreach for the yeah. oh, event, okay. event. We being the, the premier and the treasurer and whoever, and oh, Sid Schubert and myself. I knew that we were all we. Yeah, and uh, we left Longreach about 20 minutes or so before she did, and we landed at Eagle Farm, and then we welcomed to Brisbane. <laughs> it was a uh, and she, I don't know if she recognised it, we already welcomed her to Longridge. You know? well, that's a good story. So now back to the, uh, the main game, so to speak. So I would have thought at midpoint to Expo, uh, maybe a bit earlier, the numbers and the support by Brisbaneites and Queenslanders flocking through um, the Expo site. I mean, you just must have realised, oh, this is so much bigger and better than what um, you know, sort of had realised. I mean, it just at what point did that sort of dawn upon you? And dawn upon the board. Let's, let's just open that that board solidarity, just a, a smidgen, and just have a look behind the, the curtain, so to speak. Well, uh, Sid Schubert and I on the board were the ones who were biting our fingernails up to our elbows because we were the ones that told the government that we could put it on for nil, and it, during the early part. A lot of doubts crept into their discussions, uh, not only people coming through the gate, but also the numbers of people who are going to exhibit. Mm. 
we even had problems within Australia. Who was going to exhibit from Australia? Yeah, so it did read in the hand side of the Commonwealth um, government. There's questions to the then minister who was uh, Graham Richardson um, about you know when uh, the other Labor states are going to come on board. And it was interesting to see the biplane. We won't digress with that particular story. So yeah, going back to the, the core of it, just when did it dawn? That was going to happen. Well, that the, the, the success was bigger than what you thought. Uh, well, it wasn't really bigger. It was bigger than it was going to be during the course of that period, your six months or 12 months or your, whatever however long it took us to, to get it rolling. It wasn't bigger because we had expected to end up nil and we had still had a $200 million debt. The, the visitors, went, they were budgeted at 9.8 and ended up at 8 million, 8 million, 18 million. 18 million, that's correct, yeah. Oh, when did that happen? No, oh, I suppose that only happened during the course of the Expo mm -hmm. because Expo became <laughs> the place to go to in Brisbane and people used to just wander in every Friday, for example, for six months. Neil Ford tells me, uh, Polo fan and yellow taxi fan tells me that his mother went to Expo every single day. Every day. Every single day. Go out to McDonald's uh, at Mount Gravatt, where she's now got a gold pass, she's still alive, so she doesn't pay for her meals after God only knows how many years. Um, and that might explain you know, how he's managed to get a little bit of corn in his pocket, um, not having to pay for McDonald's for his mother's for breakfast. Um, and that she just visited and that she just loved it that much. Uh, and so, I mean, you know, just, it was just an interesting little byplay of a story that he told me that brought home just how loved it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, but when did it happen? Well, uh, once again, we financed it, the Queensland government financed it. And uh, I, what I really had done was finance it with an overdraft. Huge overdraft. Huge overdraft from our own funding. With, with some borrowings, and some borrowings were some of them were from overseas, and I know one short loan, uh, when the borrowings from overseas are only for a short period because you yeah. then have it all paid back within three or four or five years. And I don't know which currency it was that I'm thinking of at the moment, but I kept it in that currency, which is something we don't do. We don't mm -hmm. expose ourselves to the currency risk. But in that currency, the interest rate was you know, 2% or 1%. Yeah. But you run the risk of the uh, exchange rate. Exchange rate. So that's when I started to get my fingernails up towards my elbow. But it worked out okay, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we were really on tenterhooks there for quite a while. Mm. And uh, with that, we might just finish this uh, YouTube. And to encourage you to come back, there is a great story coming in relation to Russia, uh, and then a a good conclusion in relation to the land at the end of Expo and what Salido's thoughts are just about what the wonderful legacy that's actually been left behind uh, in the form of uh, South Bank. And with that, again, good morning, and we shall be back in a minute.